previously on Master Chef. I've been shot at and I am still here. This has to be the reason. We've never had a blind contestant. That's delicious. Do you know what I'm going to give you? A white apron. A white apron. Congratulations. <laughs> Day two of the auditions kept dreams alive for some. Yeah! But shattered them for others. For me, it's a no. Catastrophic failure. Sorry. Tonight. It's the last of the auditions, and for the remaining home cooks, the pressure is intense. I got one hour, one dish, I'm gonna change my life, and I'm gonna do that. Then, for those who won an apron, ready? The battle to keep them begins. It's all out war. The shocking results are in. Maybe we're not safe at all. As the search for America's next Master Chef continues. Winning MasterChef to me is a step in the right direction to achieving my dream of becoming a chef in a real kitchen. This is all I have. My ultimate dream is to have a restaurant. I'm gonna put my heart on that plate. I'm gonna win the judges over. It's gonna show America I have what it takes to be next MasterChef. It's the third and final day of the MasterChef auditions. And for the few remaining home cooks who still have to present their dishes, everything is on the line. This is absolutely the biggest moment of my life. I got one hour to make the biggest dish I've ever cooked. If there's anybody who's up for the challenge, it's me. First in before the judges, hoping to taste success, is 29-year-old Stacy from Apple Valley, California. Ah! That's me, Master Chef, season three. They always had a saying growing up in the high desert that you were either stuck up, up or knocked up, and I fell under that up category, unfortunately. I would drink at least a liter of vodka daily. But food was my outlet. Cooking absolutely saved my life, uh, 110%. My sobriety means more to me than anything now because I'm not afraid to do anything. This is what I'm supposed to do, and I'm going to win. Each home cook is given just five minutes to plate up their dish. If two of the three judges think they have what it takes, they'll win a coveted Master Chef apron and move on to the next stage of the competition. Hello. Hello, I'm Stacy. What are you cooking, Stacy? An espresso coriander crusted New York steak with a chimichurri sauce. You have five minutes to blow us away. Where are you from? Apple Valley, California. My area is a little bit limited on culinary culture. Just under 30 seconds to plate up. I'm ready when you are. Right. So where did the inspiration for cooking come from? Honestly, I really dove in head first after getting myself sober. I love that you took the time to roast the pepitos. Absolutely. A lot going on in that plate. It's just charred vegetables and a steak. I'm hungry to learn. I plan on getting better and better no matter what happens. <sighs> you know, the vegetables stand out, yet that's not the hero. The hero for me should be the New York Strip. For me, it's a no. Graham. I get your point. I know what you're saying. But the grilling and the, the caramelization of the cauliflower, there's focus. Those things scream out to me. I'm going to be a yes. Check. I can do this. Give me this opportunity. I will not let you down. Give me that shot, Joe, please. I can't reward ambition, so... Thank you, Stacey. I think that's a, a bad call. They're it blanched. doesn't work. They're seasoned. There's a city. It doesn't work. Oh. Try it again. 
I think the, the fat's rendered on this. The pepitas are toasted. It's grilled right. Things are cooked through. For the first time ever, I retasted it. I'm changing my mind. Oh my and they allowed me another chance. Oh, oh, you put that on. Woo! I am America's Next Master Chef! So Stacy from California got a second bite at success. I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I could win this whole thing. Ken Rami, a car dealer from Dallas, sell his dish to the Master Chef judges. I'm one of the top salesmen in the country. There's nothing I do that I don't succeed at. <laughs> I like to think I have the X factor. Wait, this is getting X-rated. <laughs> I'll be honest, I got great personality, I got charisma, I think I'm an excellent cook. I'm pretty sure I'm getting that A. I'm ready to go, let's do it. How's it going? How are you? I'm doing well. First name is? Rami. You got five minutes. All righty. What are you making, Rami? I'm making scallops, Florentine over a roasted red pepper and sweet potato puree. Where are you from? I'm from Dallas, Texas. So are you like Mr. Popular in Dallas? Well, I'm in around town with a lot of ladies, if you want me to be honest. Ladies, man. Are the scallops coming good? I think that you guys would be impressed. How much do you pay for that dish in the restaurant? For that, I pay $25. Wow. <laughs> $25. You got to taste it before you judge. I'll go try it. Good luck. I mean, I like the idea behind it. I understand some of those Southwest it's, flavors. Yeah. Scallops, it might be a little overboard. You think this will get you an apron? Yes, sir. Have you peaked? No, absolutely not. There's more? Well, there's better. Oh, so you sell second-hand cars and you give me a second-hand dish. No, no, not at all. Not at all. <sighs> Joe, yes or no? I'd say Mr. Car Salesman, I like the pitch, but I don't want to get sold a lemon, so no. Graham, yes or no? I think that there's a lot of passion, so I'll, I'm going to be yes. You started off by selling us that dish at $25. It was my mistake. Run. Get real. So far, Rami, a Dallas car salesman, has received mixed reviews for his scallops Florentine. I don't want to get sold a lemon, no. I'm going to be yes. Now, his master chef fate lies in the hands of Gordon Ramsay. He started off by selling us that dish at $25. It was my mistake. Rami. You got an apron. Let's go. Good job. Scallops are perfect. Good job. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you. Everybody out there to know that I'm bringing my A game. I am the next master chef. With this final day of auditions coming to a close, the last of our home cooks prepare to face the judges. I got one dish to change my life. They all know there are still more master chef aprons up for grabs. What are you cooking? I am making a seared skirt steak, a surf and turf. A pan roasted chicken. I'm doing a grilled veal chop. I really like the tribe oil. You know, it's not bad. It's not brilliant. It seems kind of like a knockoff restaurant plate. Oh. The cookery on this and the technique, good job on that. A little overcooked for me. Um, you've got some high notes. You've also got some bum notes on there. Joe, uh, yes or no? Uh, no. Graham? No. For me, it's a no. Sorry. Sorry. I'm going to stick my neck out. I'm a yes. I'm a no. It's just not at the level. I'm sorry. It's a no. Good as your rice is, no. You nailed that, so I'm going to be a yes. 
for me, it's a no. <sighs> so the judges' mixed opinions stop the flow of aprons. Can Jordan's chop finally make the cut? I'm sorry, you know, it's a no from me. I'm unconvinced of the, the dish. I think that there's some things in you that we can tweak and make better, and I'm a yes. Thank you. It's down to you, Jeff. I have a lot more skill than a lot of them out there. See, I'm a sucker for a veal chop. I think it's a no. Thanks. I am very disappointed. I thought I did good enough to get an apron. Completely surprised. Absolutely. Can't believe it. With Jordan out of the competition, only one home cook remains. 32-year-old David Martinez. We look like twins. How are you? Awesome! Awesome! First name? David. Five minutes, buddy. Uh, what are you cooking? It's called pescado con chile atole. What's the food dream? I absolutely want to be a chef, but when you come from an area where I come from, which is the south side of Chicago in Brighton Park, being Mexican and from the ghetto and going to jail, getting shot, is what you're supposed to do. And I didn't want to do that. I decided I'm going to use every minute of every day to make sure that I do something better. Is that ready? Absolutely ready. So here you have un chile atole con pescado. I've seen chayote. I haven't seen it braised like this. So it's almost like you're using a, a different technique. Absolutely. Where did that come from? I just, I taught myself, you know. Honestly, I don't have the money to take my wife to the places that we'd like to go. Everybody should be able to eat food like this. This means a lot to you. People say leaves don't grow in the ghetto, man. Well, guess what? I'm a f***ing leaf, and I grew in the ghetto, and everybody else can do it too, man. Absolutely. Thanks, David. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right, pull it together, dude. You got a contest to win here. a little bit awkward because everything's slopping around in there. You need a plate to get that out of. Joe, yes or no? I think that what you put in that dish is, um, it's rich and soulful. I'm a big yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Graham? I think that you've made our hometown proud. I'm a yes. Awesome! Awesome! That's the start of what's to come. I'm a yes. Congratulations. Awesome! Come and get oh it. Oh my god, dude. It's an XX double XL. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you, thank you, thank you. No cry. Oh my god. Thank you! Slow down! Okay. You little rhinoceros! <laughs> The message that I want to send to the competitors is tell me to take this away from you. America, you're looking at the next master chef. So David is the final home cook to win an apron. He now joins all the other contenders trying to move on in the competition. I've never had a moment like this in my life. It's the best moment ever. This is the first step to me allowing my dreams to develop right before my eyes. I am director of sales and marketing. I'm a stay-at-home mom. I'm an opera singer. I'm a graduate student. I'm a stockbroker. I am a food runner. I'm a carpenter. I'm an account executive. I'm a radio DJ. Yay! I'm a student. It is definitely a dream come true. This apron means more than life. It means just everything. The most exciting thing I've ever done in my life. Yeah! I'm the guy. I'm going to win this thing. I'm going to take it home. Congratulations. Oh, my god. Right now, it's all about determination and will. My motivation is a little two-year-old boy. It's gonna be a street fight, and I'm ready. 
Still to come. Your 60, um, your 60 minutes starts now. It's the first challenge of the season. This is the most pressure I've ever felt in my entire life. Some home cooks are sent home. I am not giving this egg for enough. And the final 18 head for the Master Chef Kitchen. The competition is on. Thirty-six home cooks have been awarded aprons, but now they must fight their way into the Master Chef kitchen, where the ultimate battle awaits. Congratulations, you are the top thirty-six. Well done. Each of you have got a one in thirty-six chance at a quarter of a million dollars. Your very own cookbook, and most importantly, the Master Chef trophy. Now, listen, after this next challenge, we're taking at least half of those aprons back. I'm getting a little bit nervous, but I'm still pretty confident that my apron's gonna stay on me. This apron's on the line today, and I don't plan on letting it go anywhere, because I know that aprons don't grow on trees. Are you all ready? Yes! Yeah! Follow us, let's go. Gordon's told us to follow him into the room, and, and my mind is just spinning like a roller coaster with no brakes. Nobody knows how good anybody is, so naturally I'm going, you know, compete and I'm going to win. As soon as the doors open, I see rows of workstations, and I'm thinking, oh my god, this is the real deal. This is super intense, walking in and seeing these amazing sides of beef. I'm thinking, awesome, I got this, I love beef. It's your very first MasterChef challenge. <laughs> so, the big question is, what exactly will you be cooking? Take a look behind you. I hear the beeping around me, I'm blind, and I can tell everyone's ooing and aahing, and, and I'm thinking, I have no idea what's, what's going on, I'm just trying to take in the sounds and stuff. All of a sudden, there's this big, crazy-looking robot machine. I'm thinking, oh my god, this is insane. The beef you'll be cooking today is ground beef. Ground beef is incredibly versatile, and that's why it's part of almost every country's cuisine. If we see 36 bland burgers, we're going to scream and you're going to go home. Use your imagination. Now, the pantry behind us has got everything you need to make that protein sing. You name it, you've got it. So, put your brains in gear and go and collect your ground beef. So we're walking up this big giant machine and we have this big bowl and they have these big levers and they're getting ready to pull this sludge down and all I kept thinking is like Pink Floyd the wall. Come on, gentlemen. This dish has to be perfect. Half of us are going home. That's a ton. Like just gone. Can't be me. So the heat is on. The possibilities are limitless. But your time is not. You've all got just 60 minutes to take your two pounds of ground beef and turn that into one stunning entree throughout your 60 minutes. We'll be watching you, sampling your seasonings and tasting your sauces. Make sure the ground beef is the hero of that dish. Good luck, all of you. Your 60 minutes starts from now. The judges yelled, go, and I am running for my life. Do you see stock and broth? This competition can be won or lost in this first five minutes. This is where you set the ground rules down, right? Yeah. The minute they saw the ground beef, they should have had in their head what they're going to do. Instantly. The game is being played in the pantry right now. Sorry, 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 sorry. I'm going to use my height, my athleticism. I'm going to run through the pantry, grab everything I need. Uh, hopefully nobody gets in my way, because I hate to step on any of the shorter competitors, but... 
That's just the way it rolls. I hope we get a lot of variety. What would you make? Do you know, I'd do something Pan-Asian. Um, a delicious, savory, spiced meatball. I'd do a Salisbury steak, right. but I would fold in a bunch of roasted uh, mushrooms to help bind it. I think that what you really get to see is the intelligence of the cook play itself out. How do you distinguish yourself from technique and strategy? Get creative. Focus. Uh, I'm already behind. Wouldn't you know it? I'm making a beef roll with a romesco sauce and potatoes du cheese. I absolutely have to put out the best that I have in me right now because there are some amazing cooks here. I haven't paid attention to anybody around me. It sounds like everybody's doing something creative and fun, and uh, hopefully mine will be better than all theirs. Uh, did I set the olive oil somewhere right here? Cindy? This is Cindy. She's my uh, guide and my aide. She's pretty much my eyes. I just tell her which ingredients to get, and then that's what she gets for me. She doesn't cut for me. She doesn't taste my food or anything like that. I'm trying to make a uh, Thai basil beef dish. It's like a good comfort food dish. It's tasty, and it's simple. Come on. Get creative. OK, AJ, what are you cooking? Orchietti with uh, broccoli rabe, miniature meatballs with fennel, and use the sausage to make the sauce. What's your wife cooking? She wouldn't tell me. She wouldn't tell you? She wouldn't tell me. Anna, what are you doing? Tarragon beef stuffed to onion. What are you doing, like a papillard, a roll, a ball? How are you doing? I blanched the onion in the beef stock and white wine, and then Flavor. I stuffed it with tarragon, orange zest, a little orange mm -hmm. for the acidity. Good. Have you told your husband what you're doing? No. Wow. He says it's all at war. Has he told you what he's doing? I'm not even thinking about it right now. I don't know what he's doing. He's on his own. Okay. Right, good luck. Thank you. Hey, David. Gentlemen, how are you? Good, David. What are, what are you, you making? I am going to make a faux marrow. I've cored out a potato, and then I'm going to use that as a vessel for the meat. Who here is scaring you? Josh is a pretty strong competitor. I think Tally's a pretty strong competitor. You're keeping your apron, you're going to give it back to us? No, I absolutely feel that I'm keeping my apron. Let's go. Oh. Five minutes to go. Please taste everything you're doing. Think of those techniques. Think of those flavorings. Because we are, remember, we're taking at least half of those aprons back. Five minutes to go. In the first challenge of the season, 36 home cooks have just minutes left to create an exceptional dish using ground beef. Please. Taste everything you're doing. If they fail to impress the judges, they will lose their apron. I am not giving this apron up for no reasons. They're going to have to fight me for it and take me and put me back in the swamp. I'm not worried at all. I think everything is going just as I wanted to, and I'm just keep on pushing. Well, Melanie's doing a, like a Salisbury, Salisbury steak. steak, but she... Uh, I think she must have ground the meat again, or she really worked it with her hands. It looks very, very mushy. Michael Chan, he's doing a really nice fragrant broth. If you so can pull get this broth out. in this short of a time, it's certainly... Show us certainly technique there, like a consomme. consomme. Like a consomme. What I've seen is some pretty accomplished cook. A lot of seasoning, good knife skills, mm -hmm. good techniques. I've seen the cooking happening in an intelligent way, mm -hmm. and I think we're going to be eating some tasty dishes. One minute to go. Start plating your dishes. 30 seconds to go. Finishing touches. Make this count. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And stop. Hands in the air. Well done. Based on what they tasted and observed throughout the challenge, the judges have already made some big decisions. Kim! And will now divide the remaining 36 home cooks into three groups. I'm totally confused. There's like two groups up front, but there's still a bunch of us left in the back. And I don't know if that means that we're gonna get to go through. Or maybe we're not safe at all. For the last hour, we've watched and we've tasted. Some of you have impressed us so much 
that we're already very confident that you belong in the MasterChef kitchen. But for others, we've seen enough to know you're way out of your depth in this competition. The good news is one of these groups of 12 has already made it straight to the MasterChef kitchen. I'm looking at their group and I'm looking at my group and I'm freaking out because I've come so far and I just can't let my dream be over. This can't be it for me. I'm not worried. Well, I'm a little worried. Yeah, I'm, I'm worried. Of course I'm worried. This group here are all going straight to the MasterChef kitchen. This is my dream coming true. Happy dance, happy dance. Congratulations. I am so thrilled. It feels amazing to be going into the MasterChef kitchen. People aren't gonna be able to live with me now because I'm gonna have such a big ego. Well done. This 12, unfortunately, not good enough. Please take your aprons off. You're all going home. I am disappointed, but the restaurant Jermaine's will be open, and I will definitely send an invite out to Gardner Ramsay. With 12 home cooks through and 12 sent home, all that is left is for the final group to discover their fate. OK, you guys, we just weren't sure about you, which is why we are going to take a closer look at your dishes. Bring your dishes down to the front. I get called down as part of this last group, and honestly, it must mean that my dish is so I'm pretty worried this sucks. Can the following four people step forward together? David Mack, Anna, AJ, Tanya. I'm standing before the judges. Palms are sweaty, knees weak. There's no way I'm letting them send me home tonight. First dish, please, David Mack. What's it called? A reconstructed Italian beef taco. The flavors are good. It's not a bad idea. Thank you. I think with the time you had on your hands, you could have done something a little bit more exciting. Anna. Tarragon beef stuffed onion with golden raisins and toasted walnuts and a horseradish creme. It's interesting. Nice flavor. It does work, but I want more color. I see. The inside has to look as delicious as the outside. I understand. Thank you. AJ. This is Orchietti pasta with broccoli rabe and fennel meatballs. There's a nice little spice. I think adding that sausage was a good idea. I think you did a good job. Thank you. Did you taste your wife's dish? I did not. Nervous? I am. You should be. It's a nice idea, but it's kind of bland. At this point, I'm thinking we're both going home. Next up, Tanya. My interpretation of a Persian kebab that I paired with a red onion pickle salad, fried eggplant, and a roasted garlic yogurt dressing. Can you step outside, Persian? Most definitely. It's bold. It's very, uh, very you. Can you step out that comfort zone? The judges will now decide if any of these home cooks are good enough to make the Master Chef kitchen. Okay. David and Tanya. Step forward, please. Okay, you two. Your journey 
is about to continue because you're both going to the master chef kitchen. Good job. Okay, Mr. and Mrs. Rossi. Two things are clear to me. That you both love each other and that you both love food. I will invite you to say goodbye to each other right now because there is a separation about to happen. No matter what happens, knowing I'm going to be saying goodbye to my wife is very emotional. The person going home alone is... Mr. and Mrs. Rossi, there is a separation about to happen because only one of you is coming to the Master Chef Kitchen. The person going home alone is AJ. Anna, you're going through to the kitchen. Congratulations. <laughs> bittersweet. I'm going home and my wife is staying behind. I am determined to kick some butt in this competition for the both of us and win that trophy. That is my goal. Christine, Baba, Monty, Nandini, step forward please. The first dish that we're going to taste is Christine's. Thank you. Straight down, easy. Down here. Right here. Okay. Thank you. I made a Thai basil beef served with rice. The flavors are really complex. I get the heat, the sweet, and the, it's really delicious. The, the problem is the beef, it's almost dry. Did you season the rice? No, sir, I didn't. I figured that the beef uh, and the basil would have enough flavor. You're right. Thank you, sir. I'm going to walk you back. Okay. Thank right. you. Bubba, please step forward. The idea was what? Ranch stew. Did up, decided to cook the cornbread on top. Cornbread's actually quite nice. It actually tastes better than the savory ground beef underneath. Flavorful, but pretty simple. Thanks, brother. Next, Nandini. I made ground beef with fresh spinach, cilantro, and mint with Israeli couscous, peanuts, and potatoes. Everything's cooked properly, but it doesn't scream out and explode with flavor. It's almost one-dimensional. You've actually got quite a nice depth of flavor in there. It's nice. But it's very rare you serve the couscous and potato because the starch is either one or the other. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Monty. I am absolutely beyond belief nervous. I just don't want them to vomit. What is it? It's a beef roll. I have currants in there. I have cumin, paprika, goat cheese, and then I wrapped it up in a pastry dough. The beef is delicious. Thank you. It's brave. Very brave. Love the technique. Less cheese, more flavor on that beef. You're going to keep that apron? I want to. Back in line, Monty. Thank you. Monty, please take one step forward. I'm sure your son misses you. I'm sure he's super proud of you. No matter what happens, promise me that you're going to continue your journey with food. Yes, sir. Well, with that promise, I'll promise you 
a spot in the MasterChef kitchen. Well done. Going through to the MasterChef kitchen feels like I've been given the biggest gift in the world. This is my one opportunity to make my life work out for the betterment of my son, and I am not going to throw it away. Bubba and Nandini. You guys prepared dishes that showed the three of us that getting into the MasterChef kitchen is sadly just a little beyond you. Please take off your aprons. Thank you. I just got booted. I had to turn in my apron. Good luck. Thank you. They can turn me loose now and let me go back to my swamp. Christine. Yes, Chef. Were you happy with the dish you put forward? I think the beef could have been cooked less. You feel you still belong in the MasterChef kitchen? Yes, Chef, I do. I just want the chance. Christine. With 16 home cooks already through to the next stage of the competition, Christine's future is in the hands of the MasterChef judges. Christine. Yes, Chef. You feel you still belong in the MasterChef kitchen? Yes, Chef, I do. I just want the chance. Christine. You're going to the MasterChef kitchen. I feel really relieved that I made it past the first challenge and I want to make it to the top. I want to show everyone that, hey, there's this disadvantage I may have, but there's really no excuse that you can't be the best that, that you can be. All four of you, step forward. Courtney, first up, let's go. The dish is a... It is a spaghetti bolognese. Brave move. Attempting to make a bolognese in under 60 minutes. The pasta's done nice, but the actual bolognese, the sauce, it, it's very sweet. Rami, let's go, please. I just call it a great beef patty. The side of cucumber yogurt and some pickled vegetables. Vegetables pickled beefly. Yet you look at the beef and it's slightly gray and sort of gone off color. Bold, it's confident, but I think that conceptually it's a little bit stretched. Next up, please. Thank you. The inspiration. I wanted to make a faux bone marrow, the meat and potatoes with uh, roasted vegetables. Smart idea for the bone marrow. Nice and savory. Vegetables undercooked. Root vegetables aside, the good thing is that the beef and potato works really well. It's tasty. Thanks. OK, Shireen. This is roasted eggplant, and it's stuffed with garlic mash and ground beef with a tomato butter sauce. Did you taste it? I did. I did taste it. Did you taste the raw eggplant? My favorite thing on that plate is the tomato sauce. Potato really doesn't add anything to the dish. Okay, Courtney, please step forward. You're an opera singer. That dish was your swan song. You will not be returning to the competition. I'm not exactly sure what just happened. To be that close, it's a little bit rough. I do believe the judges made a big mistake. Shuri, step forward, please. Do you think today's dish warrants you a position in the MasterChef kitchen? I believe the dish shows my potential. You do. Unfortunately, we don't. Please take your apron off and leave MasterChef. Thank you, guys. Thank you.
Both of you, step forward, please. We've seen a ton of potential in both of you, but only one of you is going through to the MasterChef kitchen. Rami, do you think you're a better cook than David? I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I was. David, you think you're a better cook than Rami? Yeah, I do think I'm a better cook than Rami. David. You are not going back to Southside Chicago. You're joining them. It feels awesome to be part of the top 18. I'm just ready to cook and I'm ready to show what I got. Rami, please take your apron off. I'm sorry, you're leaving MasterChef. Thank you. It's disappointing that my journey in the MasterChef kitchen is shorter than I anticipated. I honestly felt that it was my apron, but I'm here being judged by people who are better than me, so I'm not going to question that. Congratulations, final 18, well done. <laughs> Amazing. I'm in the top 18. All of you, come over. Oh my God, man. Top 18, competed against thousands, down to 18, and I'm in it to win it. After tasting, literally, thousands and thousands of dishes from all across America, we are here. One of you is the next master chef. The competition is on. Tomorrow night on MasterChef, the top 18 take their places in the MasterChef kitchen. This kitchen is your culinary theater of dreams. The competition rapidly heats up. Stand back, just stand back. Battle lines are drawn. The duck was better executed by me. That was a bitch move. And a surprising twist turns the competition around. What the heck is gonna happen now? One potato, two potato.